Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Kneeling QB Kaepernick can't get signed, so he's doing something that will make everyone cringe. Former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who started the National Football League take a knee protest, has had tough luck finding a job. Currently a free agent, the athlete was dealt another blow for possible job prospects when Green Bay Packers coach Mike McCarthy said he wouldn't sign him. So Kaepernick has turned to the last bastion of income for Wash Top Stars book writing. A Fox News report suggests Kaepernick has been meeting with publishers. You know what they say, if you can't do, write a book about it. His political activism may play a role in his inability to be signed to a team, and Kaepernick has filed a collusion grievance against the NFL for conspiring against him. A Fox Sports report has suggested another reason Kaepernick isn't being signed he's just not that good at the job, and there are other, better free agent quarterbacks who would be chosen over him. The report mentions that the 49ers were not too perturbed by Kaepernick's activism they matched his donations to various causes to the tune of $1 million. Either way, be on the lookout for his book coming out. HT Fox News, Fox Sports Vlad Putin discovers easy way to humiliate Madonna and rest of Hollywood's anti-Trump brigade. Ouch! This hurts. Literally there is no coming back from this. It is a lethal blow to the anti-Trump Hollywood brigade. All full of arrogance and hysteria and do as I say not as I do hot air they march on blinded by their own hatred until they stumble into a trap. And get humiliated. But this humiliation goes deep. It is not surface humiliation. No, 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 what was just revealed cuts to the quick and indicts them all. And helps Trump in ways we can't even measure at this time. And for a cherry on top, it absolutely destroys the whole media Trump Russian narrative. The media exploded with phony outrage, as did Hollywood, over the Russia Facebook stories. The ones where Russia created Facebook groups to push one agenda. The first reports to hit the media all related to conservative groups Putin created. The left went nuts and called us all stupid for falling for it. Then the news broke that Putin actually tried to organize or promote conservative meetups and rallies. Though no evidence ever emerged that any meeting ever happened, the left exploded in phony outrage. The left said conservatives were duped and worse. They congratulated themselves that they were smarter and only conservative fools would fall for such tricks. They gloated to anyone on MSNBC or CNN who would have them. In an almost continuous 24-hour Trump bashing loop. But they won't be gloating anymore. Not after today and the bombshell report from the Daily Caller. That said Putin not only did the same with liberal groups, he was actually successful duping them. In a big way. For it turns out that the Women's March, remember where half of Hollywood disgraced themselves. I am talking about you, Madonna, in an epic Hillary pity party? Well, as it turns out, Putin and his army of trolls were involved in pushing that march. Examples of posts that came from Russia that duped the liberals' hook, line, and sinker, and promoted liberal causes, not conservative causes, are below. And they are devastating because these posts we pushed out and promoted by the leaders of the left. Which did not happen on the right. One post shared by Women's March's South Carolina branch read, I need feminism because my 12-year-old sisters already cares about how much she eats. Another said, We fight to achieve equal political, economic, cultural, personal, and social rights for women. While another read, I would rather be the obnoxious feminist girl than be complicit in my own dehumanization. Where is the media condemnation? The outrage? The arrogant finger pointing? Don't hold your breath.
Nancy Pelosi hangs head in absolute shame as MSNBC report proves Trump right on border wall. The left is on a mission to destroy its credibility. They have somehow convinced themselves that they have all the answers and we all must bend a knee. They remind me a bit of teenagers in this regard, they don't know what they don't know but still insist they are in the right. Teenagers grow out of it and we are still waiting for the left to do the same. The problem is in our polarized society they will not listen to conservative voices. They will say we are tainted as they retreat to the safe confines of MSNBC and CNN. So the trick is to get them to wise up is to get the information they need to see to come from their sources. It is not easy and most have failed to break through the bias but a funny thing happened yesterday. MSNBC fell backwards into a solution. A humiliating solution that proves Trump 100% right and you know it hurts them bad. And to the left setter horror it was their least favorite show, Fox and Friends, that exposed them all. MSNBC was reporting on Trump's border wall prototypes and they were down at the actual border filming the different options displayed. They meant to mock Trump but as they were filming, behind the new wall examples is the real wall, and some people actually jumped the real border wall. On film. For everyone to see. Proof Trump is right and we need to rethink our border strategy and certainly build better walls and fences. Because as MSNBC showed the left it is just too easy to cross our Swiss cheese-like borders. The video shows a girl with a pink backpack and two other immigrants cross the porous border, in broad daylight, before border patrol officers on horseback came in and took care of the situation. This is the reality of everyday border enforcement, a border patrol agent said, the United States is still the draw, the ultimate draw for people that have dire situations where they're at. We're going to continue to witness this. It plays out on a regular basis for us. The camera panned back to the hosts of Fox and Friends and hilarity ensued. MSNBC went down there to do one story and it came away with another, David Bossy, former deputy campaign manager for the Trump campaign said, the facts got in the way of their very good, dishonest story. Correct. Help spread the humiliating news by sharing this with your friends. And don't forget your liberal friends, after all this came from MSNBC, so they will believe it. He's history Trump just stripped Bob Corker with the worst insult ever. And I don't mean history as in the history books. No, Corker won't even get an honorable mention there. I mean history as in his history. Finished. Gone. Trump got up Tuesday morning and wrote some news again. He tweeted about Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, and it wasn't pretty. I'll tell you this, I'm in Tennessee and I can't stand Corker. It was welcome news to hear he won't be back representing my state. I can't agree with Trump more. I sure wouldn't elect him as dog catcher. And I don't blame Trump for calling Corker out again. Early Tuesday, Corker really disrespected our president, who is about to go to Capitol Hill to talk tax reform. Corker said that Trump's visit was not really about substance, and really just a photo op for him. Are you kidding me, Corker? Have you even been paying attention to how hard our president is working for America? I mean, just because you decided to give up and quit, doesn't mean that's what Trump does. Do you think Corker was inappropriate? Would you elect him as your dog catcher? Comment yes or no and share, Patriots. H. T. The Hill When the Trump family just stepped out everyone noticed this crazy detail. It's not too often we see President Trump and his family have a relaxing evening on the town. But on Saturday. October 14 President Trump, Melania, and 11-year-old son Barron were spotted on their way to a family dinner at the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. The entire family was looking sharp, with Melania in a sleek black dress from Dolce & Gabbana and Christian Louboutin black patent leather stilettos. What we noticed though was that Barron was dressed in a three-piece suit too. This comes weeks after Barron was criticized in the Daily Caller for being too casual, 
saying it's high time Baron Trump starts dressing like he's in the White House. Even Democrats were incensed by those criticisms Baron is just a child and certainly can wear whatever his parents think is appropriate without people picking on him. But he sure looks like a little cutie in his suit. The family was out dining for two hours, leaving at about 10 p.m. The last time the three were photographed together was August 27 when they were coming back from a trip to Camp David. The Trumps have been trying to make sure Baron has a private, normal childhood, so sightings of the whole family out and about are rare. But with all the stress going on in Washington, it's nice to see the president having a nice relaxing time with his wife and youngest son. H.T. Daily Mail, Daily Caller